As an aerobics instructor dances, armoured vehicles block off Parliament in Myanmar's capital, Naypyidaw, on February the 1st. But if the generals thought it would be a bloodless coup, they couldn't have been more wrong. Months of bitter resistance and a violent military crackdown, with nearly a thousand killed. Six months later, the military junta is renaming itself a caretaker government, although it appears it will still hold important positions. And the leading general giving assurances elections will be held soon. We must create conditions to hold a free and fair multi-party general election. We have to make the preparations. I pledge to hold the multi-party general election without fail. But it's not clear under what conditions those elections would be held. Since the coup, the military has outlawed the National League for Democracy, Aung San Suu Kyi's party, and rejected its landslide victory in November. New elections would take place under the military's emergency laws, which will be in place for another two years. Min Ong Lai did say the military would follow the lead of an envoy sent by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. But that envoy has yet to be appointed, and ASEAN has failed to take a firm line as events have spiralled out of control. ASEAN has been divided on Myanmar in the last six months, with Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore wanting to take a hard line. But the generals here in Bangkok appear to be wanting to give the benefit of the doubt to the generals in Myanmar. What is of growing concern to the international community is the worsening COVID-19 situation in the country. More than half of the world's population lives in countries bordering Myanmar, while inside those borders, the virus is spreading unchecked. The coup has resulted in a near total collapse of the healthcare system and healthcare workers are being attacked and arrested. The virus is spreading uh, through the population very fast indeed. By some estimates, in the next two weeks, half of the population of Myanmar could be infected with COVID. On the streets of Yangon, protesters set fire to Myanmar's flag. They say they don't want new elections, they just want the military to step down. Tony Chang, Al Jazeera, Bangkok. Well, let's now bring in Cho Win, who is the executive director of the Burma Human Rights Network, is joining us on Skype from London. Thanks for your time with us on Al Jazeera. So what do you make of the head of the, um, the military uh, seemingly rebranding himself and taking on this new role of prime minister? Uh, this is the playing by old book because you see, if you see the 1962, the how the military coup, the power at the time, and then they changed to caretaker government, and then they rule for 26 years. So that is what the same uh, situation going to happen. When the military coup the power, they said that they are they're going to uh, uh, conduct the election very soon, by one year, but now 23, and at the same way they are dragging the time bit by bit. So. The, the main, the key point here is uh, they are not going to, uh, you know, uh, leave the power soon. Uh, how do you think uh, this is, this will be viewed by people in Myanmar? Well, the people is from the day one, we are against that and uh, we are supporting NUG government. And uh, the people, uh, you know, uh, the people of Burma who voted for the, uh, in 2020 for the, uh, you know, uh, NLD party, is standing uh, on their on their commitment, and they they you know still we are supporting to NUG government who uh, is uh, you know um, supported by all the minorities and, and majorities in population in Burma. But the point here is, you see that the, the military is trying to fool international community ahead of uh, uh, the UNGA in in in, to, to, in, in, in September. And so. They're trying to show that, that, that this government is a legitimacy, showing to the legitimacy, but, but the, actually the people has rejected. And bear in mind that the, the, uh, the coup is still underway. It's not achieved yet what they are trying to do. So it is an important point to highlight here. Right. And speaking of the international community, particularly the ASEAN countries who will be holding a meeting tomorrow uh, to decide on an envoy for Myanmar, um, is that significant at all? Or um, how do you expect that to play out? Or will it pressure the military in any way to change its course? See, the, because of the uh, Russia and China backing the Burmese military, uh, and also ASEAN is divided, it is not going to have any significant imp uh, impact on Burma. 
But the point is, uh, uh, the, 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 one of the uh, unfortunate situation is the international community is throwing bucket on the head of ASEAN. Uh, it's not the right way to, you know, to, to pushing all the solution towards ASEAN. That's not the right way. But it is important that international community, such as, uh, you know, world powers, need to be united. Uh, but it is not going to happen if you see the UN Security Council. So this is all benefiting that military to, you know, to, to take control the power. But before that, what is the most important point here I would like to highlight? This is the same military committed genocide in 2017, according to UN fact-finding mission. And this is the same military is committing crime against humanity, as we, Burma Human Rights Network, on 29th of uh, July, a couple of days ago, we published a report. Uh, we have uh, properly, thoroughly re did the research, and we clearly find out that this is the military operation has very systematic and very widespread. They conducted the crime against humanity in Burma, and the crime is currently continue. If you see, look at the if you look at the COVID situation, the way the military is conducting is killing the people. Their aim is to kill the people. Thank you so much for speaking to us from London. Thank you very much.